Hello and welcome to the Thursday, August 10th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, let's start out with a couple of VPN issues. The first one is a paper that was presented at the USNIX conference by researchers from the New York University as well as KU Leuven. And they call the attack Tunnel Crack. It's well, pretty straightforward, actually. And the first part I don't think is that terribly surprising, which essentially affects uh, VPNs and the ability to trick a victim into sending traffic outside of the VPN. The first one affects uh, clients that are connected to untrusted networks. And that's, of course, when you usually use a VPN for the famous coffee shop uh, Wi-Fi network and such. And what the attacker does here, if the attacker would like uh, to intercept traffic to a particular IP address, they just assign the victim in this Wi-Fi network an IP address inside that particular network. So they basically claim that this network that the victim is trying to reach is the local network. Packets inside the local network are usually not going through the VPN. After all, you may need to get past captive portals and such. So uh, that's the first attack that uh, they call the local net attack. The other one is the server IP attack, as they call it. Uh, this one is a little bit more tricky, and it relies on VPN clients often not encrypting traffic that's actually going to the VPN server. And what this means really is it's trying to sort of avoid this double encryption, where uh, you basically set up a tunnel to the VPN server if you're now trying to send traffic to the VPN server directly, well, uh, that traffic is not encrypted. Otherwise, the VPN sort of would encrypt itself. In order to exploit this, an attacker now has to essentially spoof the IP address of the VPN. They'll just forward uh, the VPN connection and then any traffic being sent uh, to a particular IP address they select, that's the IP address they basically claimed the VPN is uh, terminated at, that IP address will be sent in the clear. Of course, this is implementation specific, but they found a number of well-known, uh, particular sort of mobile uh, VPN clients like iOS and such to be vulnerable, also Android, but also default built-in VPN clients of macOS and Windows appear to be vulnerable. OpenVPN uh, may be vulnerable, that depends a little bit on uh, the configuration. I didn't see anything about specific vendor fixes, but uh, overall, of course, some of this is sort of essentially how these VPNs work. So there may not really be a great fix for some of these issues. The second VPN issue is specific to the Mozilla VPN on Linux. And the problem here is how privileges are being handled, which essentially results in any users on the system being able to affect VPN configurations and with that possibly redirecting other users' VPNs. This is, of course, less of an issue if this is a machine that only you are using, but still, well, after all, we like Linux and Unix operating systems for sort of their solid user separation which is not valid for the Mozilla VPN configuration. And then we got a little bit uh, patch Tuesday cleanup. Uh, first of all, exchange users, uh, well, uh, your life hasn't been easy and is not going to be easy. If you're running a Microsoft Exchange on a server that's not using the English language, uh, then you may have problems installing the latest update. As a result, Microsoft has withdrawn the latest update. That's the SU, the security update for Exchange and is hopefully going to release it at a later point in time. I'll link uh, to an article in the Exchange team blog that has some user comments here, also uh, with some sort of scripts that may help you if you're stuck here and uh, don't really know how to undo or redo the particular uh, patch. And then uh, we do have a blog post by Psycode about uh, 
bug, uh, you may want to call it a vulnerability in Visual Studio Code that was not patched uh, yesterday and likely will not uh, be patched. The problem here is that extensions uh, that you're loading in VS Code have access to each other's secret. There seems to be sort of no good way to prevent this. So a malicious extension could steal like API keys and such that another extension has access to. According to Microsoft, that's sort of part of the design here, which is why it won't be fixed. The problem, of course, is we have seen malicious extensions for Visual Studio Code, but uh, on the other hand, if you are loading an extension, you pretty much assume sort of arbitrary code execution by that extension. And then Google announced uh, to somewhat structure uh, their update process a little bit different. Security updates will now be released uh, weekly and every four weeks there will be what they call a milestone release. So that's when the version of the browser will increment. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.